Yes, people, welcome back to another TS Talks podcast. Hope you're all doing good, keeping safe. Now, in this one, um, I'm just talking about um, Fury Wilder 3. Obviously, had their press conference uh, a couple of days ago. And um, it was an interesting press conference. Um, obviously, Deontay Wilder came out with his, you know, his little speech. Um, I, I, I can kind of see that mentally Fury's, you know, somewhat got to him. And, um, you know, after the little speech that he, he did at the beginning of the press conference, he chose not to engage um, and answer any questions. And you know what? Um, as much as, you know, following the last fight, he's made um, a ton of excuses. And, you know, now now after the press conference, he's even done some interviews and said he, he has no proof of the things that he's he stated. It was probably the smart move to not answer any questions because you know that you know a lot of the the press and you know and that they're they're gonna you know hunt down on those questions and really you know want answers. But other than that, um, you know, from Fury, Fury's his normal self. Um, Fury can wind anyone up, and and even and even in it, he ended up you know getting a bit heated with Malik Scott and then. <laughs> It was the bit when Malik was saying, oh, about um, Fury busts his eardrum. And obviously there was a thing with Wilder's ear in the last fight. And then Fury's like, yeah, the next, in the next fight, I'm, gonna, I'm going for his eardrum. Like, he's like, I'm going for Wilder's eardrum. That's it. Like, kind of saying, oh, no, you think it's funny. Trainer and, and fighter, you know. And they've both been bashed up. I've bashed up both their eardrums, you know. But Fury's a top quality fighter. Obviously, he's disappointed that, you know, it's, we're not having an AJ fight now. But... It, it it is what it is. I think um, some of the things you're saying about no matter what you're teaching Wilder, he's going to revert to type. I feel like some of that stuff's definitely true. Um, um, and even I see um, Ade, I mean, you know, boxing talk of Ade, big up to him. He was mentioning it as well um, that, you know, Fury does revert to type, but Fury's got two types. That's the thing. For many years, all of us have known Fury as the, you know, you know, the the box the boxer, you know, you can outbox someone, box them around the ring, kinda of box the head off. But in that last fight we saw a man that said, Yeah, I'm coming to put you under pressure and whatnot. And I I, I think that's a thing that it, it may play in the back of Wilder's mind because it's like, well, you know, is he gonna come do the boxing thing? Is he gonna come do the you know, pressure fighting thing? And the thing with Fury, we've seen him do before, I doubt he would pull it out for a fight like this, but we've seen a man fight Southport before. So you don't... You, he's the sort of man... I don't even think sometimes he knows what he's going to do. That That's the thing. Even the last fight when he said, yeah, I'm going to, you know, come out, put him under pressure, etc. Even myself, I was thinking, yeah, you're saying this and you're going to be on the back foot, but you weren't. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, whether there's another press conference... Um, just around, you know, the weighing time and, and that, um, and whether Wilder wants to, you know, speak more then. Um, but, yeah, uh, the face-off was very intense, you know. It was going on for a lot of minutes, and, you know, when Wilder eventually put his glass on to walk away, you could hear, like, Fury's side, like, yeah, we won and whatnot. And it looked like at a stage it was going to go off between um, Wilder's lot and Fury's lot, and, you know... <laughs> Shane and another man were really, I think there's a one guy, I never think he's a relative of Wilder, but there's one guy that he's always with, and I think he was next to him that time when he was doing the, the you know, you know, to this day, to this day, when he was going off with that interview with Radio Raheem, there's that one guy that, I don't know, even my man's face just looks annoying, but I could see Shane, Fury, and another guy that was there with Tyson, he was like, he was more or less telling my man, like, any time, any place, like, you know, we can do this, and... Who knows, man? There's talks that you know Tommy Fury might fight um, Marcellus Wilder, and it's talking about getting on the undercard. Um, personally, I think it would be uh, an interesting fight between those two. Um, obviously, Marcellus had that a lot, a lot of smack. I remember the time he, he was, I think, which fight was it? Might have been an AJ fight. Uh, he come and he was all on the thing of like you know he, he, he and before the fight he was like. He was ready to kind of, you know, do a thing with Bellew. And Bellew was like, look, man, you're not you're not even on my level. Like, and, you know, time has shown that, you know, he's been rocked for and got sparked out by some next guy. 
and you know at the time he was thinking that he's ready for Lawrence Okoli I think Okoli would have you know demolished him he's still demolish him now but you know it is what it is if those two fight it'll be good I think it'll be good for the it'll be good for the event obviously they're talking about this heavyweight un- undercard but I think for those two if they would you know if they wanted to scrap it out obviously Tommy Fury would be fine like cruiserweight I know predominantly he's not a cruiserweight but it, it'll be good entertainment man and um this kind of leads into another thing I wanted to talk about, which I meant to talk about it last week, but I didn't. But it was like the whole, you know, um, Mayweather, um, Paul fight. And it's like, oh, oh, but you know, it's ruining the legacy of the sport and, and whatnot. And you, I hear people's points on that, you know. I know there's a lot of like boxing purists and that on it. And, you know, I really like the sport of boxing. But at the same time, like, we got to kind of understand that whilst the money's there for these guys to make for these sort of fights, you, you, unfortunately, you might as well just make it. Life's not promised at the end of the day. You know, for many of years, you see, you, you see all these fighters when they retire, you know, they're broke, but the promoters are fine. If, if, if men can, you know, if Mayweather can fight my man, uh, you know, was it like 30 mil main? What? Calm. I ain't got no massive following on, on no platform like that. If I had a massive following, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, you know, are you in a fight? Obviously, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big man, so I'm a heavyweight. I'm going to say, oh, do you want to fight Joshua, um, you know, in some exhibition fight because you've got a big following and we're going to give you 20 mil? What? I'll take that. Gladly. You know what I mean? Like, people got to understand. People are like, oh, you, you can't just do everything for the money. Oh, it's about legacy. And I think Mayweather made a point. It's like, oh, my, my family can't eat legacy. You know, there's certain things like royalties and that that may be able to, you know, provide some sort of wealth for generations to go. But in, in general, um, life, life ain't promised. Like, you got to live every day like you see your last. You see with the situation with Kristen Erickson the other day. Like... Life ain't promised. That's a you know a healthy athlete collapsing on the pitch. A lot of us out here aren't healthy. So for the, these men, if if you can fight a man that you know is not a, a serious boxer, and and make some you know make some decent change off of it, good luck to them. You know, it's very unlikely you're going to see me hating on on someone that's found a, an opportunity, you know, to make money. And I think another thing that that was said was that well, you know if you're not interested in it, don't pay for it. Don't watch it. But you know the demands up, the demands high for it. So when the demands high for something, it is what it is. I think I see one interview where I think maybe Hearn was even slaying it. But it's like you put these men like headline on the card, and like, you, it it just is what it is, man. It, they they found a, a avenue, a market where you know they're able to come and do this thing and make money off of it. And all I'm saying is is good luck to them, and I wish them all the all the best of luck. And you know, um, obviously at the same time good health and that and yeah that's my thoughts on it so yeah that's it for me on this one um i'll be grateful to get your thoughts on it so obviously if you listen on the youtube um let me know your thoughts in the comment section below um if you listen on the spotify then you know definitely hit me up on like my instagram um ts talks underscore and yeah man let me know your thoughts on this and i hope to catch you on the next one peace